It was in the early 1990s that BirdLife Malta, buoyed by the success of the creation of Adira Nature Reserve, presented plans to the government for the restoration of the Shemshia wetland, located at the end of Puales Valley. The site had long suffered from years of degradation. Work started in summer 1991, and after two summers of work, Sima became the gem it is today. But how does one manage such a site? How does one decide what work needs to be done, when to do it, and where to do it? Well, management obtains the answers through research. Research and science provide us with priceless data and information which then allows us to take the right decisions when implementing habitat management plans. With this in mind, management decided to allocate a space within the nature reserve where we can show the public the different research work we carry out on site. Possibly the most important aspect must revolve around the water quality parameters since the water quality is undoubtedly crucial to the well-being of the wetland. Regular water readings which we monitor include salinity, oxygen levels, nitrates and pH. All these parameters and others too give us the tools to ensure the water, home to the national fish of Malta, the killifish, is monitored. The water body at Sima is brackish in nature, meaning that in winter, following the rainy season, the water becomes fresh water, but later, in summer, because of evaporation, the salinity levels increase drastically. It is fascinating that the fish and several other aquatic forms of life strive despite the seasonal changes. So earlier this morning I was testing the water quality parameters, one of the most important of which to check is the salinity. It's important to keep an eye on the salinity because if it gets too high it can kill any of the organisms living in the water, one of the most important being the killifish as it is one of the main things as part of the diet of the different animals. What I used to do that was, it's called a sond. This is the actual thing with the probes in it. Here you can see the different probes, so you have one which can measure pH, which is also important to keep an eye in. You've got the oxygen probe, um, turbidity, chlorophyll, nitrate. It can measure a whole load of things, which it's important to keep an eye on. Then this is connected to this, which um, it's essentially like a mini computer, and it stores all the information on it. Mapping forest species of the brackish wetland habitat is a good indicator of the state of the wetland. Unlike other habitats, the wetland is full of life during summer months so when the water level decreases and the shorelines is full of life. Apart from research concerning birds, which at Sima is mostly handled in the bird ringing station, management also carries out other works targeting different species, like dragonflies, bats, chameleons and hedgehogs. There's been a three-year ongoing study regarding dragonflies and damselflies. So these ponds, these freshwater ponds, this is in Simar Nature Reserve, is a crucial habitat and it helps us to study the species, which species of dragonflies and damselflies you can find. And the way we can do this is by finding the excuvias. Now what are these? So the dragonfly has to develop and emerge out of the water and it has to shed its exoskeleton. Okay, so it's an insect, it has an exoskeleton and it sheds it. Think of a knight with an armor, iron armor, and it can't grow if it doesn't remove it. So it removes it, it moves during the night and then early morning they'll be attached to the vegetation, the bulrushes, and these habitats are crucial. We can find out which species are present, okay, by the differences in the excuvias. Now, not a lot of people know this, but excuvias are part of just a part of the development of the dragonfly or damselflies. So these ponds are like oases within reserves and crucial because they're freshwater, they're theming with life. There's so many tadpoles, um, Maltese painted frogs, it's quite amazing. And these dragonflies lay the eggs in the water, they develop, they emerge as larvae, and then once their cycle as larvae is complete, they emerge and shed that excuvia into an adult. So think of egg, caterpillar, butterfly, similar, but no pupa, 
Okay, just this aquatic dragonfly with no wings coming up and then developing wings once it sheds this exterior. And we can see these, we can see these species and know the differences in our research center. Okay, we can observe the fine differences and amazing intricate details and it's quite enjoyable. So yes, this is truly an amazing sight to behold and we need more of these habitats. Another group of insects that are targeted for specific study are the moths. Once a month we set up a moth trap which catches moths overnight and then in the morning they are photographed prior to their release unharmed. The moths are attracted to the bright blue light. This plastic disc stops them from flying upwards and the silver funnel directs them down into the moth trap where we've got some cardboard for them to hide behind so they don't get stressed. In the morning we take the photographs and then we send them to a local expert who helps us to identify all of the species. We also get help identifying the vegetation species that their caterpillars require to feed. This is important for the reserve because it helps us learn which kinds of trees, shrubs, grasses are necessary for the moths and the caterpillars, which are crucial components of the food web here at Simar. Another mammal which is dependent on moths as part of their diet are the bats. Several can always be noted flying around the reserve at dusk and dawn, and recently a new study into catching, identifying, ringing and releasing these mammals has started. Some bat species prefer to hunt on the open water, whilst others fly among the trees. Some are migratory, others not. Some are quite rare and need extra conservation measures to ensure their continued survival. The study being carried out will help us gather more useful information for the preparation of future management plans for the site and the species themselves. Moving to other species also present at Simar and equally important for different reasons, regular counts for the hedgehog and the Mediterranean chameleon are carried out. Such counts normally occur at night when it is easier to spot these species. We have now gone a step further and with the help of funding from Explorer and with the expertise from University of Malta, we have radio tagged some specimens to determine ranges, territories and habits of these iconic species. It is important to highlight the fact that all studies we detailed in this video are covered by the necessary permits issued by the Environment and Resources Authority and that expert help and training was provided to ensure no harm was done to the specimen. Here at the Simar Nature Reserve Research Center, you have learned more about some important scientific work we do in our wetlands. This work is important because it sheds light on the ecology and inhabitants of the place. All this would not have been possible were it not for the kind uh, financial support offered by the Melita Foundation, who we thank for their continued support. Now that you have visited the re research center, we urge you to continue the tour of Simar Nature Reserve, but this time with a different level of admiration to the ecology and to the habitats of the site. Enjoy it! <laughs>